Hey, thanks for stopping by. Robert Kofed with Computer Creations, and today I want to cover some new tools, some new features that Lightburn 1.7 is going to have. And it is, it's not released to the public yet, but you can go download it if you want. But before you do that, I wanted to show you a feature that you need to do um, on your current Lightburn, and it's one way to save all your settings in one fail swoop. So we're going to come up here to File, and we're going to come down here to Bundles. And what is a bundle? So if I say Export Bundle, the beautiful thing that Lightburn has done is now in one operation, I can wrap all of my settings, my hotkey settings, all of my device profiles, um, all of my material libraries, all of my art libraries, all of it, everything that I need, my scan offsets, you name it, it's going to go into one package. So what I would do is I would say export. I would save it to a safe spot because this is, would be a great way to, um, if for some reason you had to change your computer and you needed to reload Lightburn, you could export this to a safe file and then import this same file into either a different computer or into this version 1.7 and it'll be set up just like the way you've got your Lightburn set up now. So um, please go ahead and do that. And then when you have the new Lightburn uh, downloaded the 1.7. So if I have the Lightburn 1.7 here, and, and it's going to show up differently, meaning that it's going to uh, show as a different icon on your desktop uh, where it says Lightburn pre-release. And so the good thing about this is now you can run these side by side so you can compare them if you want. Only until this goes to the public and then it will replace the light burn that you currently have. But I really enjoy the way they've got this set up now. So if I want if I've got this light burn 1.7 downloaded, all I've got to do is open it up. 1.7, then all I've got to go to file, go to bundles, and go to import bundle. Go to that location where you exported it from your existing light burn and Everything will be set up exactly the same way as you have it now. Now, you won't have to do that uh, once this goes to public, but if you want to play with this newest version um, before it goes public, you can certainly do that. Before we get started in Lightburn, I wanted to mention a couple of things on kind of where this new software, because it's not public yet, where it's found. But I also wanted to mention that LBX 2025 is going to be coming July 19th and 20th in New York City. If you didn't attend last year, you should seriously consider it. It's a lot of fun. They're going to have a lot of great uh, uh, classes. They're going to have a lot of great vendors. And I think it's going to be a great event, and I can't wait to go. So be sure and secure your tickets if you haven't done so. And then if I take a look and I go back here, if you want to download this before it goes public, just go to Downloads and come down here to where it says Public Release Candidates. And again, remember, this is still in beta format, so there could be some minor glitches, some, you know, it's still in it where they're kind of fixing it, tweaking it, that kind of stuff. It hasn't been released to the public, but you can download it and play with the new features here. And uh, what I really like about what they've done is they're going to put it in a pre-release folder, so it is separate from your current light burn, and that way you can kind of compare them side by side. And it works out really good. This is just information on how to download it, how to treat it. But this is where all the meat and potatoes are on the changes that they've made in 1.7. And we've are, and we'll talk about some of these, but a lot of them we're not going to talk about. Um, and one of them I wanted to point out here is it looks like they've done a lot of work on the cal uh, the camera calibration tool. Um, it looks like there's been quite a rework done on those kind of things. The other thing that interested me a little bit was this new Mac OS camera system. Not sure what that's all about, but that sounds like that's going to be a pretty good deal. Um, if you have, let's see, it, there's just a lot of other things that um, we just can't cover. Um, camera combo box tooltip shows in camera info. 
It'll automatically sense the type of camera you have when you connect it in the, in the camera tab. Um, so a lot of great enhancements there. Of course, the trim shapes tool we, we'll, we'll talk about. And so anyway, I just wanted to show you kind of where this lives. Don't forget to get your LBX 25 tickets. Uh, and uh, let's get in light burner. I'll show you some of this stuff. The first thing that I noticed, and this is not a feature, it's just an observation on my part. Um, so 1.7 is on top, 1.6 is on the bottom. And it looks like to me the, the icons on the side are clearer and easier to read. Maybe it's just me, but looking at these side by side, it looks like especially these top icons, these icons are a little brighter and easier to see. The other thing you're gonna notice is look at this right here. We've got a trim tool and it's fantastic. I'm gonna show you how it works here in just a minute. So it looks like to me the icons are a little bit brighter. It looks like the colors are a little bit more vibrant. This is 1.6, 3. this is 1.7. Maybe it's just me, but it looks like these are uh, uh, more contrast in the colors, easier to see. So that was the first thing that I noticed. Let's talk about some other things that they've done in Lightburn. And one of the few things that I'm gonna show you is I'm just gonna draw a couple of shapes out here just to have something to work on. But one of the first things that you're gonna notice when you go into your select tool is when you drag from left to right, now it's a shaded window instead of just the outline, which is great. So it's gonna be red if you go from left to right, which means it has to be, the shape has to be completely inside the red box for it to be selected. Or if you go from right to left, it's a green shaded box and anything that it touches, it will be selected. So new shadings on the select tool, which is very handy. Let's talk about the line tool. There's been some enhancements regarding the line tool and how it's used. You will notice if I select it now, you've got kind of a new icon. This is one request I'd make of Lightburn. Um, the icons that are illustrated for these features are very small. They're very hard to read. If we could just increase those icon sizes on screen, it would really be helpful for, especially for people like me that uh, can't see as well as they once did. So you'll notice that this icon has a hard angle going into the bottom right hand corner. Or if I look down here, it says press the S key to toggle between smooth and corner points. So let's just take it without doing anything. If I start clicking my mouse, uh, and I click and I click and I click, I'm gonna get hard angles, okay? There's no smoothness whatsoever. If I wanted smooth nodes in here, I'd have to come in here and change these nodes to get these rounded. The way they've approached this line tool now, if I just hit the S key, so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the letter S and you'll notice that that icon cursor changed to a rounded corner. And now if I click, and I click and I can drag so it's more Bezier type stuff. I can just keep doing that. Way easier. I come back and close it up. And I'm done. So then when I want to go back to a hard angle drawing, all I've got to do is hit the letter S again, and you notice it goes back to, if I hold the shift key down, it'll keep me vertical or horizontal. And now I'm at the point where I can draw either hard angles or I can incorporate uh, Bezier uh, angles or smooth angles with just a keystroke. Hitting the letter S will flip from hard angles to, to smooth angles. It's a great feature. I'm gonna use this on just about every one of my designs. I really appreciate them doing that. While we've got this up, let's talk about the new trim tool. It's right down here, pair of scissors. And this is gonna save everybody a ton of time 
because you won't have to do any or very few Boolean operations. I know a lot of times these Boolean operations down here confuses everybody and now you may not have to do that. So let's say that I wanted to uh, snip out some of these intersecting lines. I can come in here and select the, the uh, trim tool and you'll notice now it's going to just highlight areas that it thinks it wants you to trim away. And the good thing about this is it will automatically join so you don't have to do any node editing when you do that. So if I wanted to get rid of this piece right here, I can go ahead and get rid of it. I could get rid of this piece here, this piece here, this piece here. And I'm not doing any node editing. And you notice now that it's keeping it as a closed shape. So I don't have to go in and attach those different lines that have been cut. Um, great feature. I think I'm going to be using this a lot in uh, my future projects for sure. Um, so this is a great use of uh, the trim tool. You'll also notice uh, where the flyout help tooltip says if you hold the control key, um, and you click it, it will prevent automatic joining of the results. So you have the ability to either automatically join things or keep them uh, segmented or parted out, which is a great option to have in some circumstances. So this is a new trim tool, going to be very handy. Um, I think it's going to help us a lot. We won't have to do near as much node editing. It won't be nearly as confusing from a Boolean function. And I think a lot of people will get great use out of the Trim tool. One other enhancement that they've made is they've had where you can generate a QR code in Lightburn for quite a while. But now you've got a multitude of selections, whether you want to do a QR code or a barcode, which is great news. It just gives us more options as makers to be able to provide additional services to our uh, to our uh, clients. So if we come up here to tools, come down here to create barcode, and we're going to draw out just a simple shape to begin with. And you're going to notice that we still have all of our QR codes down here, and we have some additional QR codes. So here's our normal one that we would normally use. You put your, you know, your web link or whatever it's going to be here, your raw content. It would generate a QR code and you'd be good to go. Um, but also you'll notice there's some other options. There's some micros. There is what they call a rectangular uh, QR code because sometimes a square QR code just won't fit in a design. So I'm excited about this because in a lot of cases, this may take up a lot less space on a business card or something like that. So you, you get the, uh, the ability to do a rectangular QR code. And then the other thing is you can see that we have all kinds of selections for barcodes. Now, I haven't uh, dealt with barcodes much, but I can tell you that this is something based on what your require, you know, your customer requires. You'll ask them what format that uh, barcode has to be and see if uh, that format uh, is listed here and you have a much greater ability to solve your customers' problems if they're needing some barcodes. So this is something I'm excited about. I'm going to start using this a little bit on some of my business to business customers. And uh, I think it's just to me another great feature that Lightburn provides. One other new feature that they've added in Lightburn is when you want to generate a material test card. So we're going to go to laser tools. We're going to come down here to material test. And you will notice that we have, if you drop down in the presets, they've got some pre-designed material test cards for different types of lasers. So whether you got a diode laser, you got both cut and engrave. You've got cut test for CO2 for both cut and engrave. And these are very general settings. So if we go in here to a CO2 and then we preview it, 
you're going to notice that the power is going to range from 10 to 100 and from 50 to 500 millimeters a second. And really, in 95% of the cases, somewhere in this range, you're going to see a sweet spot for your laser. So it's a great place to at least start to refine or hone in on what your uh, engraved settings are going to be. And it's the same way for the cut settings. So if we come in here to the CO2 cut tests and we say preview, um, same thing. You might have to tweak uh, with your, uh, you know, your border setting on what it's going to take for you to cut out that test card and what it's going to take for you to, uh, you know, make the, the text that's in that text card readable, um, those kind of things. But it gives you the ability. They've already done some work for you. Um, and then remember that as you generate these, you have the ability to save these and name them. So you can recall them down the road and use them on different uh, other materials. And so just another enhancements to the material test generator. One other thing they've got changed was in our settings icon, you can see that instead of a mishmash of settings and only just a few places to go to change your settings, now they've got different tabs across the top that separates all the different functions, which is very handy. It's a lot more laid, you know, more efficiently laid out now. You've got your editor settings and all of the things that you have options for in that tab. You've got your units and grids. So again, you're not having to look through a bunch of different elements in the program to get things set up. So this is just a better way to display it and keep it organized. Um, you've got your display, your import and export options, and your camera options. So they've cleaned this interface up a great deal, and uh, it's a lot more organized now. Well, as you can tell, there's a lot of nice new uh, tools and features and enhancements to this new 1.7 version of Lightburn. Just a big thank you to Lightburn for all their continued work to just make this program better and better every time they release a new version. Appreciate you hanging in there with me. Thanks and have a great day.